Patrick Doherty, 31 years of age. Gerald Donaghy, 17 years of age. Jackie Duddy, 17 years of age. Michael Kelly, 17 years of age. Michael McDade, 20 years of age. Kevin McElkinney, 17 years of age. Barney McGuigan, 41 years of age. Jared McKinney, 35 years of age. William McKinney, 27 years of age. William Nash, 19 years of age. James Ray, 22 years of age. John Young, 17 years of age. And the 14th person that died four months later was 59-year-old John Johnson. I'm struck by the number of teenagers murdered by the British government on Bloody Sunday and their forces, the Parachute Regiment. We've got to remember why they took to the streets of Derry on the 30th of January 1972. They took a principled stand. They stood up for civil rights and human rights and they stood against internment. Peaceful protests of the civil rights movement asserting nationalist rights of nationalist citizens who were under attack in this part of our country. And we owe them a great debt for that stand. Oftentimes we forget about that. They took a principled stand and they paid the ultimate sacrifice. The civil rights movement and human rights activists were under attack from the 1970s. The orange state, the sectarian state, collapsed under the modest demands of peaceful protest. They were met with guns that were pointed at the people of Derry and are pointed at our community for three and a half decades afterwards. Impunity reigned after those triggers were pulled when you were affected by state violence and collusion. The same parachute regiment six months before, on the 9th of August and over a three day period, murdered 11 people in Ballamurphy, including the parish priest, Joan Conley lay in the months, smaller than the green you stand on, crying out for help while she died. Father Daly is an iconic figure that's ingrained into the consciousness of our people and the injustice that resonated every day since Bloody Sunday, carrying a white handkerchief as people carried the body of Jerry Donaghy, as his life ebbed away. The world was there, they see it through film, and no doubt if that TV crew and film crew hadn't been there, Father Daly and those carrying Jerry Donaghy had been murdered, the same way they murdered Father Noel Fitzpatrick in Spring Hill in July 1972 with four other people, and in the same way they, fought, they mur murdered Father Hugh Mullen and Bella Murphy, on August 71. And as I look through this crowd, I see so many faces of families who have been affected by state violence and collusion and who have stood up like the families of Bloody Sunday. The whitewash that was widgery is consigned to the history bins because of the Savile Inquiry. The Savile Inquiry righted a terrible wrong of injustice that was heaped upon the families and an injustice that used families here today still suffer from. That inquiry was important historically because the Widgery Report would have been the historical footnote for time to come. In a hundred years time, if we hadn't had Savile, that's what you would have had in the annals of history. And that's why it's important for the campaign for truth, justice and accountability and setting the historical record straight. We stand at a site called Groves Rayleigh Corner. The same parachute regiment that murdered in Bella Murphy and murdered in Derry shot Emma Groves. She was filmed, iconic footage of her coming out of her home with her eyes out and a blood soaked towel as her family tried to take her to the hospital. Her and Clara Riley, who this site's named after, took a principal stand and stood with families and stood up for justice and human rights. Not far from this site, John Dempsey was shot dead. In last October we stood in that graveyard and we remembered Maura Meehan and Dorothy Maguire, two sisters brutally murdered by the British Army in Cape Street in October 71. We remember Desi Healy. We remember Shawnee Simpson. We remember so many people. 
the guns that's been turned on our community. They didn't point at any other community, they pointed at ours. Carl Ann, Kelly and Julie Livingston, Francis Roundtree and Divis Flats. We remember all those people killed by state violence directly and indirectly. We know what the British Army did through MRF. They were involved in the bombs in the Glen Owen, the Hunt Lodge and the White Fort, the Bridge Bar and Short Strand. They were driving around this community and shooting people at will. They killed Daniel Rooney just down the road. Every spot in this community we can point to the injustices that still stand today that require to be addressed. And when they weren't killing us in our communities, like on the streets of Derry or in these streets, they were murdering us through their proxies with loyalism. The Glen Ann Gang, Kelly's Bar, McGurk's, the three largest bombs around that time was McGurk's with 15 dead. Then we dubbed the Monaghan with 33 dead. And even the Oma bomb in 1998 has the fingerprints of British intelligence through agents and informers and prior knowledge of it. A court in Belfast said under Justice McFarland only several months ago that an inquiry should be established because of the background and the involvement of the British. And that graveyard, when three people that were murdered in Gibraltar from this community, we come back to bury them. They attacked using weapons from South Africa that they imported an armed loyalism with. 30 years ago, this week, the Sinn Féin Centre was attacked and three people were killed. Sean Graham's bookmakers on the Armour Road was attacked with five people killed. And a report, a 300 page report, will detail the collusion and that, those sets of murders. Everywhere we go, there is injustice. And that is precisely why, folks, that is why the British government have attempted to throttle us and the families at every turn in terms of seeking truth and accountability. They've undermined the judicial system. The Good Friday Agreement brought an end to the conflict and it gave agency to families, to each and every one of you to stand up and to use the law. The devolved criminal justice process brought about an Attorney General that families could lobby and lawyers could lobby and NGOs could lobby for fresh inquests because there was never investigations. Like Bloody Sunday, the truth was covered up and the lies were told and the families were doubly victimised. And so at every turn, they've put obstacle after obstacle in your way. But we are resilient people and a determined people and we are never giving up. And I want to say one thing of why there was a Bloody Sunday inquiry, and it's important. Because I stood with the families at RFJ, with the Clare O'Reillys and the Emma Groves, with those families and part of their journey. And people told them, it's impossible, you'll never get an inquiry. It's not going to happen. And then when the peace process came about, some politicians told them, you pose a threat to what you're doing to the stability of building peace. And the one person that redoubled their effort every time and ensured that inquiry happened in my mind and in my view and in my read of it was the late Martin McGuinness. He told them never give up and he stood with them. And that's why there was an inquiry. Let's not forget that. And we need to take that same principle stand against these amnesty proposals and to stand up to them. And many of the families, and I'm looking out and around here, that faced those awful times and whose loved ones were killed. They went to a person for help and support. They went to a person who brought them into their office and went to their homes and took their statements and fought for them. And they went and they killed that person too. And that was Pat Finucane. So this is what we're up against, but we're not giving up. So we are opposed to this. The British government and their amnesty proposals to cover up their sins and their crimes and our country have resorted to the ultimate tactic, a whitewash and an amnesty. Well, it's not going to happen. The US Congress and the US Senate are opposed to it. The Irish government and every political party in this island and on the island of Britain, the opposition parties are opposed to it. The human rights chiefs of Europe, the European Commissioner to the Council of Europe, the United Nations, everywhere they go, the door's being closed on them when they're seeking support or trying to justify their proposals. But we know what they're doing. They're covering up their crimes. So finally, folks, 
Like the people 50 years ago on the 30th of January 1972 went to the streets and took a principal stand. They stood up for justice. Stand with us and stand with the families and continue to stand up for justice. Let's keep hope alive because truth will out and families will be vindicated. Gora Mila Moyagov.